familiar with many elements or molecules which are neither shining, malleable, nor ductile like metals. Then what are they? They are non-metals. The non-metals exist in all three states that is solid, liquid and gaseous. However, most non-metals are either solids or gases. Bromine is the only non-metal which is a liquid. In the periodic table, the non-metals are present on the right hand side. You have seen in the earlier modules that magnesium burns in air with a dazzling white flame. Do all the metals react in the same manner? Almost all metals combine with oxygen to form metal oxides. The reaction being metal plus oxygen gives metal oxide. For example, when copper is heated in air, it combines with oxygen to form copper oxide, a black oxide. The reaction being 2Cu plus O2 gives 2CuO. Similarly, aluminium forms aluminium oxide. The reaction being 4Al plus 3O2 gives 2Al2O3. Recall from earlier modules how copper oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid. We have learned that metal oxides are basic in nature. But some metal oxides such as aluminium oxide, zinc oxide etc. show both acidic as well as basic behavior. Such metal oxides which react with both acids as well as bases to produce salts and water are known as amphoteric oxides. Aluminium oxide reacts in the following manner with acids and bases. The reaction being Al2O3 plus 6HCl gives 2AlCl3 plus 3H2O. Al2O3 plus 2NaOH gives 2NaAlO2 sodium aluminate plus H2O. Burnt in air part 2. Most metal oxides are insoluble in water. But some of these dissolve in water to form alkalis. Sodium oxide and potassium oxide dissolve in water to produce alkalis as follows. The reaction being Na2O solid plus H2O liquid gives 2NaOH aqueous. K2O S plus H2O L gives 2KOH AQ. It is important to remember that all metals do not react with oxygen at the same rate. Different metals show different reactivities towards oxygen. Metals such as potassium and sodium react so vigorously that they catch fire if kept in the open. Hence, to protect them and to prevent accidental fires, they are kept immersed in kerosene oil. At ordinary temperature, the surfaces of metals such as magnesium, aluminium, zinc, lead, etc. are covered with a thin layer of oxide. The protective oxide layer prevents the metals from further oxidation. Iron does not burn on heating. 
but iron filings burn vigorously when sprinkled in the flame of the burner. Copper does not burn, but the hot metal is coated with a black colored layer of copper to oxide. Silver and gold do not react with oxygen even at high temperatures. It is important to remember that sodium is the most reactive of the samples of metals taken here. The reaction of magnesium is less vigorous implying that it is not as reactive as sodium. But burning in oxygen does not help us to decide about the reactivity of zinc, iron, copper or lead. Let us see some more reactions to arrive at a conclusion about the order of reactivity of these metals. With water, metals react with water and produce a metal oxide and hydrogen gas. Metal oxides that are soluble in water dissolve in it to further form metal hydroxide. The reaction being metal plus water gives metal oxide plus hydrogen. Metal oxide plus water gives metal hydroxide. But all metals do not react with water. Metals like potassium and sodium react violently with cold water. In case of sodium and potassium, the reaction is so violent and exothermic that the evolved hydrogen immediately catches fire. The reaction being 2K solid plus 2H2O liquid gives 2KOH aqueous plus H2 gas plus heat energy. 2Na solid plus 2H2O liquid gives 2NaOH aqueous plus H2 gas plus heat energy. The reaction of calcium with water is less violent. The heat evolved is not sufficient for the hydrogen to catch fire. Ca solid plus 2H2O liquid gives CaOH2 aqueous plus H2 gas. Calcium starts floating because the bubbles of hydrogen gas formed stick to the surface of the metal. Magnesium does not react with cold water. It reacts with hot water to form magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen. It also starts floating due to the bubbles of hydrogen gas sticking to its surface. Metals like aluminium, iron and zinc do not react either with cold or hot water. But they react with steam to form the metal oxide and hydrogen. The reaction being 2Al solid plus 3H2O gas gives Al2O3 solid plus 3H2 gas. 3Fe solid plus 4H2O gas gives Fe3O4 solid plus 4H2 gas. It is important to remember that metals such as lead, copper, silver and gold do not react with water at all. You have already learned that metals react with acids to give a salt and hydrogen gas. That is the reaction being metal plus dilute acid gives salt plus hydrogen. However, this is not 
a generalized case. Hydrogen gas is not evolved when a metal reacts with nitric acid. It is because HNO3 is a strong oxidizing agent. It oxidizes the H2 produced to water and itself gets reduced to any of the nitrogen oxides N2O, NO, NO2, etc. But magnesium or Mg and manganese or Mn react with the very dilute HNO3 to evolve H2 gas. Also, the rate of reaction with dilute acid differs from acid to acid. If we allow to react Mg, Al, Zn, Fe with dilute HCl, we find that the rate of formation of H2 bubbles is fastest in the case of magnesium. This reaction is also the most exothermic in this case. The reactivity decreases in the order Mg is more than Al is more than Zn is more than Fe. In case of copper, no bubbles are seen and the temperature also remains unchanged. This shows that copper does not react with dilute HCl. How do metals react with solutions of other metal salts? As an important rule, it should be remembered that reactive metals can displace less reactive metals from their compounds in solution or molten form. We have seen in the previous modules that all metals are not equally reactive. We checked the reactivity of various metals with oxygen, water, and acids. But all metals do not react with these reagents. So we were not able to put all the metal samples we had collected in decreasing order of their reactivity. Displacement reactions studied in Chapter 1 give better evidence about the reactivity of metals. It is simple and easy if metal A displaces metal B from its solution, it is more reactive than B. The reaction being metal A plus salt solution of B gives salt solution of A plus metal B. The reactivity series The reactivity series is a list of metals arranged in the order of their decreasing activities. After performing displacement experiments, the following series, known as the reactivity or activity series, has been developed. Here you can see potassium is the most reactive among the metals, with gold being the least reactive of the metals. It is simple and easy if metal A displaces metal B from its solution. It is more reactive than B and is placed higher in the reactivity series. In the previous activities, you saw the reactions of metals with a number of reagents. Why do metals react in this manner? Let us recall what we learned about the electronic configuration of elements in class 9. We learned that noble gases which have a completely filled valence shell show little chemical activity. We 
therefore explain the reactivity of elements as a tendency to attain a completely filled valence shell. Let us have a look at the electronic configuration of noble gases and some metals and non-metals. We can see from this table that a sodium atom has one electron in its outermost shell. If it loses the electron from its M shell, then its L shell now becomes the outermost shell and that has a stable octet. The nucleus of this atom still has 11 protons but the number of electrons has become 10. So there is a net positive charge giving us a sodium cation Na+. On the other hand, chlorine has 7 electrons in its outermost shell. and it requires one more electron to complete its octet. If sodium and chlorine were to react, the electron lost by sodium could be taken up by chlorine. Sodium loses one electron to form sodium plus iron. Chlorine accepts that electron to form chlorine minus iron. After gaining an electron, the chlorine atom gets a unit negative charge. Because its nucleus has 17 protons and there are 18 electrons in its K, L and M shells. This gives us a chloride anion, Cl-. Sodium and chloride ions being oppositely charged attract each other and are held by strong electrostatic forces of attraction to exist as sodium chloride or NaCl. It should be noted that sodium chloride does not exist as molecules but aggregates of oppositely charged ions. Let us see the formation of one more ionic compound, magnesium chloride. Here, magnesium loses two electrons to form Mg2 plus ions. Chlorine accepts electrons to form chlorine ions. Oppositely charged magnesium and chlorine ions join together to form MgCl2 compound. The compounds formed in this manner by the transfer of electrons from a metal to a non-metal are known as ionic compounds or electrovalent compounds.